dark and energy. These two simple words are very familiar to us. But when they are combined, it becomes very complicated. Dark energy is one of the most strange and peculiar matter in our universe. For nearly last 100 years, this dark energy has puzzled the whole scientific community. To visualize it, let's take a simple example. Suppose there is a cosmic explosion that happened one year ago. Now, how far anything can move within this one year? Light being the fastest thing can move one light year within this one year. As nothing can move faster than light, nothing can go beyond this one light year radius. If this is true, then let's compare it with the biggest explosion in our universe, the Big Bang. Our universe is 13.8 billion years old, means the Big Bang happened 13.8 billion years ago. So being the fastest object, light can move 13.8 billion light years within this period. The radius of the universe should be less than 13.8 light years. But the observational data says something else that challenges today's understanding of physics. According to observation, from Earth to the edge of our observable universe is about 46.5 billion light years. So it's confirmed that our universe is expanding, but it's technically impossible because it is expanding at a speed greater than the speed of light. That is the reason why we see two distances when we study distant galaxies. One is the light's traveling distance or the distance before expansion and another one is the distance after expansion. The mysterious object that is responsible for this expansion of space is known as dark energy. We also call it vacuum energy because in the void of space where gravitational attraction is almost zero, this energy dominates. In today's video, we will know the mysteries of dark energy and the connection of the multiverse theory with dark energy. Hello everyone, my name is Aditya and welcome back to my YouTube channel, SkyMap. In 1915, Sir Albert Einstein published his general theory of relativity. People, including him, thought the Milky Way galaxy was the whole universe. So he faced a unique problem. He thought, due to gravitational pull, the whole universe would come to a singularity one day. But Sir Albert Einstein believed the universe is static. It can't be suppressed in a single point due to gravity. So in 1917, Einstein introduced the cosmological constant or lambda, which is a hypothetical repulsive energy that prevents the universe from collapsing. However, in 1929, the great American astronomer Sir Edwin Hubble published his groundbreaking discoveries. He said, the Andromeda is not a nebula. It's a separate galaxy like our Milky Way. Not only that, there are many galaxies in our universe. Some are same as Milky Way and some are even bigger. The Milky Way is not our universe. It's a very small part of our whole universe. He also observed a unique phenomena called red shift. He saw some galaxies are red shifted and some are blue shifted. When something comes closer to us, it becomes blue shifted because the light wave gets compressed. Oppositely, when something goes further away from us, it stretches the wavelength of light and becomes red shifted. For example, the Andromeda galaxy is coming towards us. We see it as blue shifted. But when Sir Edwin Hubble plotted the red shifted galaxies on a graph, he came to a conclusion. He said the universe is expanding. He named the rate of expansion the Hubble constant. Surprisingly, the value that he proposed for Hubble constant is very close to today's observation. Today the value of the expansion rate of our universe is 70 km per second per megaparsec. One parsec means 3.261 light years. This means a galaxy at a distance of 1 megaparsec is shifting away from us at a speed of 70 km per second. 
and this expansion is increasing with every megaparsec at a compound rate. On a small scale, it doesn't violate any rules of physics. But on a large scale, it seems like expanding at more than the speed of light as the Hubble constant increases at compound rate, which is technically impossible. The unknown energy responsible for this expansion of space is known as dark energy. Seeing this observation, Sir Albert Einstein said that assuming the universe is static was the greatest stupidity of his life. He died with the thought that the cosmological constant lambda was a dive in a wrong direction. But surprisingly, when we put values in his equation, it shows the same result as Sir Edwin Hubble proposed. Not only that, the expansion rate is very close to today's theory. Sir Albert Einstein was such a genius that unintentionally he discovered dark energy. But sadly, he died with the thought that it was the biggest misconception of his life. Whatever, today we know on large scale, universe is expanding at more than the speed of light. It's very tough to realize, but true. In fact, according to the famous mass energy equation E is equal to mc square, if we consider energy and mass on the same scale, then our universe is made up of 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter and only 5% visible matter. That means whatever we see in our universe is only 5% of the universe, else 95% is dark energy and dark matter. To know in detail about the invisible dark matter, please watch this video. We discussed earlier that the expansion of space is happening at a rate of almost 70 km per second per megaparsec, which is also known as Hubble constant. However, the value of the Hubble constant is not always 70. It varies with observation. There are two main methods by which we evaluate the value. The first one is cosmic microwave background CMB and the second one is standard candles. First, let's talk about the cosmic microwave background CMB. The universe after the Big Bang was hot and dense. The light couldn't freely travel through space. After cooling down, the photons started traveling. These photons gives us a rough view of the universe just after Big Bang. It's called the cosmic microwave background or in short CMB. The red areas indicates regions with higher matter density while the blue areas represent regions with lower matter density. Today these red spots have taken the shapes of galaxy clusters while the blues have become voids where dark energy dominates. By comparing today's universe with the universe after Big Bang, scientists can calculate the expansion rate of our universe, the Hubble constant. Its value is 67 km per second per megaparsec. On the other hand, scientists can calculate the value of the dark energy by calculating the distance from our galaxies. To do this, scientists use the standard candles in our universe. We can't evaluate the distance of a far object if we don't know the luminosity of the object. If something has fixed luminosity, we can easily calculate the object distance by studying the brightness. There are two such objects present in space. One is type 1a supernova and the second one is Cepheid variable stars. When a white dwarf explodes, it creates a huge explosion which can easily surpass the luminosity of the whole galaxy. It always emits the same amount of light because it explodes when the mass of the white dwarf exceeds Chandrasekhar limit means 1.44 solar mass. This explosion is called type 1a supernova. To know more about supernova, I highly request you to watch this video. On the other hand, Cepheid variable stars always blink at the same luminosity. So scientists consider these two incidents as standard candles. 
with the help of these standard candles when they calculate the hubble constant it came out to be 74 km per second per mega parsec so there is a huge gap between this hubble constant measured in two different ways 67 and 74 km per second per mega parsec scientists initially thought this gap would decrease with the increasing power of telescopes. They calculated it using Hubble telescope and Chandra X-ray observatory. Now NASA and ESA is trying to recalculate it using James Webb Space Telescope and Euclid Space Telescope. But till today, nothing has helped scientists. Now this gap between two Hubble constants is known as Hubble tension. We don't know the reason behind Hubble tension. Is there two kind of Hubble constant? Or the Hubble constant has changed over time? It's just another mystery related to dark energy. Today, we are confirmed that space is expanding. If that is true, then it should have started from a singularity. So, the expansion of space indirectly supports the Big Bang Theory. Now, if this is true, then it is also possible that expansion from singularity can happen anywhere at any time. It's also possible that another Big Bang is taking place out of our observable universe. So, it indicates that the multiverse theory can be true. If you want to know in detail about multiverse, please write down in the comment section. I'll make a different video on this topic. If you found this cosmic journey very fascinating, then you might also like this video where we have unveiled the mysteries of dark matter, the invisible matter present everywhere. At last, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family members and subscribe for more space related content. And remember, keep looking up, stay curious and explore the mysteries of the night sky.